Before, well, okay, so you did, you answered the question, so that's okay. <laughs> so, okay, so after you actually acknowledged yourself mm -hmm. to be a Muslim, um, when you came back, when you went back to your mm -hmm. family, to your community, mm -hmm. uh, as already as an identity, right? Mm -hmm. so you yes. Had change at the time. Um, did you have any negative or positive? Uh, there was some negative reaction from um, within the community in which I live, as well as from some non-Muslim friends, uh, and also from some uh, business associates. Uh, but very much positive response from uh, my Muslim friends. Yeah. Uh, the first year after I became a Muslim, uh, I lost probably about 50% of my income. Wow. After you became a Muslim, living as a Muslim, did your view change? Once, one, it's one thing to see the community, Muslim community mm -hmm. from the outside as an atypical Christian, mm -hmm. but once you became Muslim, did it, did it change your point of view? Well, as I said before, I, I was spending over half of my social time with Muslims to begin with. And uh, the Muslims that I knew at that point were all wonderful examples of Islam. So that certainly didn't change afterwards. I continued to have contact with them, etc. But I did then come into contact with the wider Ummah and, and discovered that not all Muslims were such shining examples of Islam as were the, my initial friends. Um, you know, in Islam, um, all things are beautiful. Mm -hmm. Islamically, when you learn the Quran and everything, it's, it's, it's beautiful mm -hmm. it's for a good for the human being. Um, but which idea of this will impress you the most? Well, I, I would point to three things. One, um, on an intellectual basis, uh, I, I was impressed with uh, the strict monotheism that is found in the Quran and Islam. And uh, quite frankly, coming from my background, uh, seminary background, um, there were things in the Quran that, quite frankly, no illiterate seventh century Arab could possibly have known. Uh, and that was jarring uh, to realize that fact. Um, but also, uh, Islam's message of love and Islam's message of brotherhood were, were on a more emotional level, uh, strongly motivating forces. Um, what is your opinion about the Islamic world these days, the present? Well, First of all, let me hedge my bets in answering that question, because I wonder whether there is an Islamic world, really. Uh, if we define an Islamic world as uh, a world or a community or an ummah in, in which everyone is, is practicing Islam, I'm not sure that exists, quite frankly. Um, as far as uh, the so-called Muslim countries of the world, uh, I've had the opportunity of living in Jordan for over a year, and, and it was a wonderful experience. Um, and many, many uh, valuable things, I think, exist there. Uh, the way in which families care for each other, um, the extended family concept that is there, the fact that in, in my 14 months living in Jordan, I never saw a nursing home. You know, families cared for their elderly. Uh, those are beautiful things. Um, on the flip side, um, every strength is a weakness in some ways. And the focus on extended families, etc., uh, creates what social psychologists call a collectivist culture. And in a collectivist culture, very often it's more 
who you know than what you know. And everything becomes based upon sort of tribal and family alliances as opposed to actual skill and merit. In contrast with, say, the Western world, uh, which is an individualist culture, and everything's based on what you know, not who you know. So, in Al-Uma, what do you think the problem is? In the Uma, I want to speak about the Uma in America primarily. And I think the major problem that we face as an Uma in America is one that we as an Uma create. And that is the failure to differentiate between culture and Islam. So we have many Muslims from all over the world living here. And they each bring their home culture with them, along with their Islam. And to a great extent, I think, fail to differentiate what is their home culture and what is Islam. And the problem this creates is, is not a problem for themselves necessarily, or for converts like you and me. But the problem it creates is for the second generation of Muslims in America. Because the children of these immigrants are born and raised in America. And if you ask them, what's your nationality? They'll tell you they're Americans. You know, doesn't matter where their parents are from. They're Americans. And if we do not differentiate home culture from Islam, we can very easily end up creating a situation where the youth feel that they have to choose between being an American and being a Muslim. And if they feel that's the option given to them, quite frankly, we're not going to like the answer they give. So I think this is the major problem. Failure to separate home culture from the religion of Islam. Obvious, obviously, the solution is we do need to make that differentiation.